what's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. The Stage 2 Finals was so hype that we're making a second video about the Finals Day here today. The first one was about the best DPS in the world and kind of debating that back and forth. But today, we're going to focus specifically on the massive upset of the Fusion overcoming the London Spitfire. Cleaning up their tank play massively upgraded the Fusion and allowed for their very skilled DPS and support players to shine. Sometimes matchups do come down to one team making way too many mistakes and sort of handing over the game. That's not what happened here at all. Fusion made a ton of plays, so we're going to break down when those happen as well. They by no means were given the semifinals. Just some team fight, some decision making from the London Spitfire was so questionable that I have to conclude that they either disrespected Fusion enough to think they didn't have to play a perfect game to beat them, or they were just kind of zoned out assuming they were going to get to the finals de facto. And we'll take a look at a few examples of each instance, mistakes by London and plays by Fusion to sort of piece together some of the major points of why the Fusion came on top in this game. Nepal Village sometimes can turn into a close range brawling metagame. If one team decides to go for point presence brawling with triple tank, it could be a really strong way to win the point. Fusion open up in the triple tank, win the point, but the Spitfire fight fire with fire, go their own triple tank, but they go with the Reaper, who's going to be stronger at bursting down tanks. And Carpe is trying his damnedest to keep up with the damage output that Bird Ring's putting out with his Hellfire shotguns, but he just can't do it. The Fusion can't find enough damage with all the tanking and the threat of the shotguns in the way, get bullied off the point, so they swap it up, go back to the drawing board themselves, they come out in a triple tank, but there's very crucial differences between these two team compositions. Lucio Zen on the Fusion side, which everyone who's ever played matchmaking knows they get kind of nervous about those support duos. We don't have a lot of healing, but what Lucio Zen brings up to the team is a massive ranged advantage that I think a lot of players forget. Zen is a massive asset in the medium range damage dealing department. Watch as this fight breaks out. The Fusion decide to stay at arm's reach away from the London Spitfire, and even though Fraggy goes low, Bird Ring wants to capitalize on that kill, but what's this shot call by the London Spitfire to stay on top in a poke battle? It doesn't make any sense at all. The London Spitfire are in a brawling, close range, rushdown comp. It says it in the name. They have to fight up close, and because they stand at range, it don't really rush them down and finish this fight. They slowly lose it. A big lapse in shot calling and hesitation from the Spitfire made for the basic mechanics of how the team comps were to just heavily go in favor of the Philadelphia Fusion. Imagine if that rushdown actually came in, if they push W Mouse 1, get their Reaper and tanks brawling up in close range, start trading out these kills, the healing deficit that the Fusion were at would start to show. When you have a comp like this where everybody's close range, you have to think there's two ways we can fight. We either fight on the point, which they originally did, and just held the objective forever. Don't even have to leave it to be honest because the enemy's got to come get it from you or if you fight out in the open it better be quick you better get on them or you're just going to realize that they have more range damage than you and honestly Losing that fight meant that as this round progressed, they were fighting from a disadvantage because they lost a fight they weren't supposed to. After the fusion swapped and had no ultimates to use, even though the Spitfire eventually come back and retake with a bunch of tank ultimates, they have to hold for about two more fights, which is just a bridge too far, really. Realizing that their range damage deficit was kind of the issue, Bird Ring does swap to the Junkrat so they can play this position and actually have the range damage to capitalize, but he doesn't keep a tab on where the D.Va is. He tries to find the back line and a play like this sometimes can be the biggest hero play you've ever seen. One of the best ways to burst down a Moira in a triple tank comp. If that Junkrat finds Moira in the backside and frags her quick, it can be the entire team fight one, but because the D.Va caught him out, it was the fastest way for the London Spitfire to lose that fight. And in isolation, you might say, well, Bird Ring just kind of got caught out there. There's not much he could have done. I think over time, as you watch this series back and the other examples that we're going to see, Bird Ring was really off this day and making a lot of uncharacteristic characteristic mistakes like that, a bit of hubris maybe on his side, not having his escape plans set beforehand when he gets into an engagement to know where the heck he's going to go to get out of dodge and make sure he doesn't die. Really a big deal at all levels of play, really, but especially at the top level of play. You can't disrespect your opponent and play in positions where they'll easily pounce you, unless your name's Pine and you just hit five headshots in a row. Then you can play in any position you want, but that largely doesn't happen a lot of the time. You have to respect your opponent and their capabilities to frag you and don't hang around in fights that you can't win. Now, 
Onto this Hanamura map. Spoiler alert, the London Spitfire aren't gonna even cap first their own, but that's a whole other separate problem. Here's another example, I think, of Birdring really overstaying his welcome. You criticize him missing the Pulse Bomb, but hey, Pulse Bombs get missed sometimes, but why the heck does he stay up here with 80 HP for this long? I understand maybe he's thinking that. At the pro level of play, if the enemy soldier gets the high ground, you just lose. So maybe he thinks he has to fully commit to stay here no matter what, but he's facing up against a sound barrier on the fusion side and multiple multiple range damage threats that can just turn and kill him, and they do. Now, of course, his team ends up being able to come back and retake here, but these weird little over faces from Bird Ring just start to add up for me through the course of this series and really are uncharacteristic of his play. Okay, so this next clip with the London Spitfire on attack this time is a bit of everything combined, some really questionable decision-making again from the Spitfire, but also some massive plays from the Philadelphia Fusion, specifically their supports. Now, I think what the London Spitfire were thinking here with Running this McCree was that the Fusion typically were an over aggressive team. Fraggy could always get caught out over aggressing, and I think they assumed that if they bait that aggression in, they can win with the flashbang, catching that engagement. But instead, Neptuno gets a money grenade over the bubble to anti nade Bird Ring, and that's just easy cleanup from there. This is why you rarely see McCree ever get used on this map. Instead, you'll see characters like Hanzo or Widowmaker, who both can utilize the natural high ground that the attackers get at the choke in order to fire down onto their opposition. But instead they send Bird Ring again with the McCree into this choke, they counter engage on him and whatever they thought they were gonna be able to accomplish catching engagements, it just never worked out because you don't really want to catch an engagement way out in the open anyway. Unless of course, you know, you have your own high ground like with a Hanzo or a Widow, like I said. So they waste just two minutes trying that out. End up swapping over to the Genji, which is a good call, but I think really the Widowmaker would have been the most easiest answer because it would force the enemy supports to hide, which they didn't have to do in the first few fights because you have a medium range character with McCree who doesn't force them to respect that DPS threat at all, allows for the Ana and Zen to get massive value from the back corner. Now, with the tried and true standard meta dive comp, they're able to find the back line, but frags trade back and forth, and Fusion is able to regroup for probably one of the most sensational retakes we've ever seen. The casters were even saying, no way the Fusion's gonna be able to come back. They're capping the point, giving two ticks, but the frags happened so long ago that the run back time wasn't really an issue, and the allocation of resources and how this retake goes is picture perfect. We've talked a lot about stalling objectives on this channel, but it's very important. We're going to talk about it here again. Poco is the first one to go through. Remember, the Fusion still don't have all their members yet, so they're not even looking to win the fight right now. They're looking to stall for time. Stop progress on the objective by using characters that can't die or take forever to die to just buy time. They use the bubble to try to keep the mech alive as long as they can, and then use self-destruct to clear some space out. And by that point, Neptuno puts the nano boost on Fraggy, who commands space yet again. Think of all of this time with these ultimates getting used on the point that the dive comp of the London Spitfire just has to respect. Really, London should have abandoned this point completely and went and looked for frags off the point. They largely do and are able to peel back from that aggression, but they don't find the kills. Keeping in mind, Gesture got both slept by Neptuno in that time, Carpe pulse bombed him on the floor, both Winston's out of the fight. This means that Bird Ring has no protection for this Dragon Blade when he tries to go at the back line, gets anti nated, bursted down in the back by Poco's Diva Mech. That's the Dragon Blade gone, and then it's easy cleanup from there. What a sensational retake. Really, Chris, mid fight decision making of where to put what resources when, and with barely any time left now, Fusion is allowed to go play greedy into the choke. They can't even get out. For some reason, Bird Ring panic swaps to the McCree as if that's gonna help something. I don't really know what the thought process is with this McCree. You have like 10 seconds to get back to the point and you're gonna take the slow walking cowboy to get there? I, I don't know. But at that point, it didn't really matter. The map goes to the Fusion and that's a massive win, guys. Spitfire has not lost Hanamura the entirety of stage two, and it slips from their fingers with a bunch of key errors and some massive play from the Philadelphia Fusion. Beautiful stuff. And you just can't really lose one of your key maps against a team as good as the Fusion. That's how you end up dropping series. When you just take maps off, let off the gas just a little bit, and you're gonna open up opportunities for teams that are supposed to lose to you to win in an upset. Now we're gonna take a look at one last engagement for the London Spitfire. Here on Route 66 though, Carpe's Widowmaker really was putting on the hurt. So much so that Bird Ring swapped off the Widowmaker of his own to go for the Genji and ran this full dive comp 
But the cool thing about Widow right now, and a lot of people aren't saying this and I think don't really realize it, is that Widow with a Mercy Pocket is one of the most powerful non-dive setups in the entire game. Largely the mobility wins out in most cases, and the coordination you can have with a dive comp is going to win at pro play. But as we covered in the video for the best DPS in the world for Carpe, we're going to take a look at the mobility advantage that having this Widowmaker brings. Bird Ring pulls out the Dragon Blade and uses all of his resources to try to go kill Carpe, runs out of time, does eventually get the kill, but it's all for naught. What a sensational grapple hook from Carpe to get away from that largely gets rezzed anyway and this is kind of the general principle of how strong Widowmaker is with the current state of Mercy even after all of those nerfs that mid fight protection has really put Mercy into a powerful place that I think many are still underestimating a lot of other aspects of her kit went down but that main component of what she's able to do in the mid fight is still really great because think about it Widowmaker can grappling hook away from enemy dive get to ground that they can't even touch and then and Mercy can follow her as well. So you have two characters that are really hard to be dove. And as long as your Widow is good enough to eventually hit a shot, they can just keep parrying away until they're able to find it, burning a lot of time that the dive comp simply can't take in order to find their kills. They don't want the fight to go on this long. But also as well, we have to point out that it doesn't make any sense at all that Bird Ring is caught out on his own on this fight. Where is his tanks during all of this? Well, I'll show you. It's pretty hard to see, but you see the silhouettes of them trying to go at the America truck top left, but watch Jester's health pool. The damage amped headshot from Carpe whittles him down to nothing and allows for Snillo to easily clean up that frag. And now Bird Ring has no support system to come in with him. The whole team fight is broken awry. And that's why the Widowmaker backline setup with a Mercy is so powerful because a headshot on a dive tank as they're trying to come in chunks them down so low that they just don't have any health to work with. The dive tanks badly have to avoid damage at all costs until they get in close into their brawl they can use their abilities more efficiently and as just a general rule of thumb poking down dives before they can come in is a bit of a win condition to overcoming dive and something that Fraggy had been struggling with funnily enough for quite a long time taking too much damage before you even get in on the dive and if you shut down Jester like that one of the best Winstons in the world what's really bird ring left to do other than get shot in the back by Poco's micro missiles it's pretty tough because sometimes you just can't really afford to set up for a surprise dive. Sometimes you have to telegraph it coming down the center lane. They were short on time, not a whole lot they could have done. But at the same token, what that does is guarantee that Carpe is going to get an opportunity to have a shot. And if he hits it, you basically lose, which is why overall, at least in the pro meta, at any point, if you're able to run the Widowmaker Mercy setup, I think it will win out as long as your Widow hits the shots that you should expect her to be able to hit. Strategically speaking, it's just too powerful to overcome. And for me, at least, those were the key reasons why the London Spitfire choked in the stage two semifinals, but hey, it was a crazy finals day either way. I'm excited to see these teams battle it out again in stage three, most notably watching Fraggy continue to improve as a tank player. And I think he's going to be crucial for enabling the rest of his team to step up and challenge in the playoffs, which are a short two stages away. We're already halfway done with the Overwatch League season. So now it's the time to go big or go home. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. It's pro analysis this videos take quite a bit of work, so I do appreciate when you guys show the love so that we can keep putting the resources into making them. Also, we upload each and every day, so you're going to want to make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Linked in the description is our Twitter, where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.